بسم الله الحمد لله والصلاة والسلام على رسول الله صلى الله عليه وعلى آله وصحبه ومن ولا أما بعد أن الله سبحانه وتعالى blessed Ibrahim with two children Ismail and Ishaq Now Ishaq عليه الصلاة والسلام he was blessed with twins one boy was named as Aiz and the other was named as Yaqub Yaqub عليه السلام he was already born in the lifetime of Ibrahim alayhi salam and Ibrahim alayhi salam had seen him. Now, after a period of time, there was a harsh argument that took place between the two brothers, between Is and Yaqub alayhi salatu wasalam. And because of this argument, the mother had to send Yaqub to his uncle named Laban. After a long period of time now, Yaqub alayhi salatu wasalam marries his cousin's sister, the daughter of his uncle. Her name was Leah. And later on, he married her younger sister as well. Her name was Rahil. Now the second wife, Rahil, she gives birth to two sons, one who was an extremely handsome boy. His name was is Yusuf alayhi salatu was salam or the Prophet Joseph may peace be upon him. Yaqub alayhi salam had 12 children. From those 12 children, 10 were from a different mother and 2 were from a separate mother. Those two are the young ones. The youngest one is Binyamin and his older brother Yusuf. Yaqub used to favor Yusuf and Binyamin over the rest. And the reason why he loved them more is not because of favoritism. He loved them because they were more righteous in conduct and they more pleasing to Allah than the others. And he used to see that, the other ten. They couldn't handle it. Why is our father always favoring Benjamin and Yusuf over us? Yaqub has another name also, and that is Israel. And the Mufassirin say that Israel means Abdullah, the servant of Allah. So when we say Bani Israel, the children of Israel, we are talking about the sons of Yaqub. And when we talk about the twelve tribes, we are talking about the tribes that are the descendants of the twelve sons of Yaqub. After a very long period, Yaqub alayhi salatu wasalam, he yearns to visit his parents and his brother. Which brother? Is the one he had an argument long time back. So he, his wives, sons, all of them, they undertake a long journey to go visit his parents and his brother. During the journey, they stop for some time at a place later to be known as Al Qudus. And at that location, Yaqub alayhi salatu wasalam, he built a house of Allah for Allah to be worshipped. And that masjid, that house of Allah, was known as Bayt al Maqdis. So now he reaches his motherland. His parents, in other words, Ishaq alayhi salatu wasalam and his wife, they had become very old and whilst he was with them, they pass away. We cannot talk about Yaqub alayhi salam without touching in detail the story of Yusuf alayhi salam. And Yusuf alayhi salam was an absolute exception, a very unique child. And the story starts when this young boy saw a dream. A dream that confused him. And he immediately went to his father and relayed this dream to his father. And he said to his father, Oh my father, in a dream, I saw 11 stars and the sun and the moon. I saw them, all of them prostrating to me. He's a young boy. He does not know what this means. But his father, Yaqub alayhi salam, is a prophet. He's a wise man. He's an old man. He's been blessed by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And he witnesses, he thinks to himself, this is something special. You are being chosen. Allah is choosing you, sending a sign, choosing you for something special. You're a special boy, my son. His father Yaqub alayhi salam said to him, My son, do not tell this dream to your brothers. Because they may plot a plot against you. Their jealousy may boil over and they may plan against you. He says, Oh my dear son, verily shaitan is an open enemy to mankind. Look at the Prophet. He is clearly saying the children are good the youngsters are good but shaitan is who is bad and shaitan if we allow him to overtake us he controls us and then we become evil with him the minute we throw him out automatically we become better people and then he advised his son and said allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will complete his favor upon you and teach you the interpretation of dreams so that he may perfect his blessings upon you and upon the family of Yaqub, 
just as he perfected his blessings upon your fathers before you. Ibrahim and Ishaq, verily your Lord is all-knowing and all-wise. One day, his brothers got together, the ten, without Benjamin, without Benjamin, and they said to each other, it seems our father has gone crazy. He's lost. He loves Yusuf more than all of us. A terrible love. This can't, this can't be. He loves him more when we are a larger group. Ten of us, we're all young. We're all mature. We're all strong. Ten of us make a strong gang, a strong group. And what's Yusuf compared to us? He's only one and we are ten. Nah, our father is in great astray. So what did they do? They started planning things. So the worst plan came out. Kill Yusuf. Or just get rid of him, bash him until he dies. After we do such a crime, who could repent to Allah? Kill him so that his father will no longer see him again and he'll forget about him. So where the attention of your father is going to come, is going to come to us. The older brother, lenient one out of him. He said, better than killing him, let's throw him in a deep well. Or one of those travelers, they'll find him and then they'll take him with him. In this way you got rid of him and at the same time he did not kill him. So they accepted that. So what they did is they said, okay, how do we get our father? Yaqub was so protective of his son. He would not let him go out and play with them. So the brothers, they came out with the plan. And they said, O oh, our father, why don't you trust us with Yusuf? When we are indeed his well-wishers, send him with us tomorrow to enjoy himself and play. Verily, we will take care of him. He needs to get out and about, come into the jungle, run around, you know, grow up, become strong, he needs some exercise. He will play and while he plays, we are definitely, absolutely going to look after him and secure him and put him in safety. He said, surely it will make me very sad that you should take him away. He used to love his son so much. One day is too much for him. He can't let go of his son for a day. And then he said, I'm afraid if you take him with you, then you just leave him somewhere and a wolf might come and eat him up. Something nasty might happen. They said, if a wolf eats him while we are a large group, how could a wolf take our little brother when we are 10? <laughs> Dad, don't you trust us? He's our brother. If a wolf came and ate him up, <laughs> what, what are we there for? So you can trust us. Don't worry, we'll take good care of him. Trying to speak to their father until Yaqub was convinced to send his beloved son Yusuf with them. The father came out of the house and he watched them taking Yusuf in the distance. And as they were taking Yusuf in the distance, oh, hip, hip, hooray. They were swinging him, they were throwing and catching him, and they were, you know, you know, arms around him and holding his hand, and you know, they're smiling, and Yusuf is enjoying this. This is my first day out, my brothers are gonna look after me, my father let me go out for the first time, it can't get any better. Yusuf alayhi salam, he loved his brothers and he trusted them. And the father is watching all of this and sweet, how sweet they are with Yusuf until they couldn't see their father again in the distance. So that's when they started to slap him. And each time he went to one of them, he went to the smallest one, he started poking him and pushing him. So he went to the older brother, complaining to him about the smaller brother. And he started poking him and pushing him as well. He went to the third one, he did the same thing, fourth, fifth, until he finally reached the oldest one. And the oldest one resented him and pushed him away too. So they started pushing him and bullying him around. And hit him. And they pushed him and said, you, you, you. Until finally they reached the well. And they surrounded him and they took off his shirt. So it was bare from the top. And that's when he realized, alayhi salam, that his brothers had plotted to do something evil to him. They brought Yusuf alayhi salam and they put him on the edge of the well. And he's appealing to them, please. Please, why, what did I do to you? Why are you doing this? And they wouldn't reply to him. So they threw him in the well. He fell to the bottom with so much pain. It says that there was water in there and there were some rocks. So he climbed up on one of the rocks and sat alone in the darkness. And his brothers left him and went away to their father. When they were throwing him in the well, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala revealed to Yusuf, and we inspired in him, indeed you shall one day inform them of this affair 
while they know you not allah subhanahu wa taala told yusuf one day you would tell your brothers about this event and they would not know that it is you who is speaking to them the reason they took his shirt is because they went and got some blood from a goat which they slaughtered and placed the blood of the goat on the shirt they came to their father and they put on an act as if they were crying saying oh dad you know what happened and their father so upset and is looking for yusuf was yusuf they said to their father oh our father we went racing with one another and we forgot about yusuf and we left him with our belongings and a wolf ate him and you know what you will not believe us even if we telling the truth and then they presented the shirt to yaqub alayhi salam to say look the shirt has blood on it this is what happened to it and allah says false and fake blood deceiving their own father that the whole shirt was not even ripped that yaqub said subhanallah how merciful this wolf is he ate my son and left his shirt it's your own desires that deceived you for sabr a beautiful patience i exercise immense patience and allah will assist me against what you have described and done yusuf alayhi salam was in the well a caravan of travelers passed by they sent somebody to go and get some water for them so he inserted the bucket in the well and yusuf alayhi salam clung to the bucket and this man is pulling up the bucket looking for to get some water he finds in there a child he said ya bushra hada gulam oh good news this is a little boy he was so happy why is he so happy because in those times slaves would get you a lot of money he was an ordinary boy he was a nice cute handsome looking boy the most handsome boy you could ever find so they felt that they are going to sell this young child and it's a very good deal for them so these guys they take yusuf alayhi salam they clean him up a bit and they take him into the carriage way and where all the goods are they throw yusuf alayhi salam inside there and they hid him how did they hide him they put him in the cart and they put sacks and bags on top of him and they hid him as another piece of merchandise why did they hide him because they didn't want to tell the local people that they found a boy allah says but he knew what they were doing and they went to egypt yusuf alayhi salam was put for sale in egypt anyone want to buy this young boy and people look people look wow wow such a gorgeous boy an auction came about everybody bidding each other away all these people come together hey 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 i want to bid i want to bid i want to bid i want to bid his price is going to go rocket high so what happens here is just happening to pass by was a was a merchant and he was a minister of egypt and he comes in and he sees this young boy and he says wow wow he puts a price straight away that none of them could beat they sold him for a good price but allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says and they sold him for a low price why because they never knew who was in their hands they don't know who is the one they sold they don't know who this child will grow up to be and if they would have sold him with the weight in gold that would have been a cheap price the one that bought him his name was the aziz aziz was the honorable one he was the treasurer of egypt He was the one who took care of all the financial affairs of the whole country and he had a wife they say her name was Zulaikha the problem was that this man he was impotent he couldn't have babies so when he found this young beautiful child he bought him he went back to his wife and he said take care of this child raise him up good raising let him grow up within us maybe we will benefit us in some way or we can adopt him as our own child and the aziz loved Jesus so much that he treated him more than a son he started even to pass on some work to him some responsibility some authority and then what does allah says thus did we establish yusuf in the land that we might teach him the interpretation of the events and allah has full power over his affairs but most of the people do not know he is going through a lot he is being trained in the house of al aziz so allah subhanahu wa ta'ala put yusuf alayhi salam in that environment even though he is a slave 
Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is putting him in the decision making center. He is close to these events to learn, to gain experience. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, and when he, Yusuf, attained his full manhood, we gave him wisdom and knowledge. Thus we reward the doers of the good. The woman of the Aziz, she was still chaste, still a virgin. She had a very high authority and she was youthful, she was young and she was actually very beautiful. Power, beauty and wealth. The moment she saw him as a young boy, she thought he was the most handsome boy that she could ever see. But as this boy grows up, man, the boy's eyelashes and the boy's, you know, wide eyes and the boy's skin and the boy's beautiful smile and the boy's lovely face and the noor and the light and oh man the boy's size and the muscular boy you know all those things this woman is looking every day and she's got only one thing in mind that, that boy is so 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 sweet that i've got to grab him one day she looked for the perfect moment for her to fulfill her desires and she prepared the perfect room in the perfect moment, in the perfect timing, she wore her best clothes. And she put her perfume and her makeup. She called Yusuf alayhi salam and she closed the doors. And then she tells him, come close, come close. And seduced Yusuf alayhi salam. She said to him, do whatever you want with me. So you got a handsome man in front of her, who is a slave. A slave means no one cares about his reputation. So he's got no reputation to lose. Number two, no one is to blame him. He's a slave. No one blames a slave. Number three, he's irresistibly beautiful. Number four, he's got a powerful woman before him who can protect him. Number five, she's wealthy. She can look after him. So if he does what she wants, he'll live like a king. Number six, she's beautiful. So she's attractive. Number seven, she's locked the doors and the windows. No one can see anything. So number eight, she says to him, I'm all yours, do whatever you want. Every single opportunity with ease and lust and temptation is there. And what was the response that she was expecting from Yusuf? Is yes. And who is she calling? She's calling a prophet. She's not calling an average man. She's not calling an average Muslim. An average believer, she is calling a prophet, a messenger of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And what did he say? He said, Ma'adha Allah. Ma'adha Allah, I'll seek refuge in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. No way. No way such an action will be accepted from someone like myself. A'udhu billah, this is absolutely wrong. I would not accept such a thing. This is against the orders of my Lord and your husband was good to me. I can't betray him and do something like that. Those who are oppressors will never succeed. And that's why Yusuf alayhi salam is the first on the day of judgment that is shaded by Allah's throne in a particular category. He's already a prophet, so he's already amongst those that are shaded by the throne of Allah. But he will arrive in a category that the Prophet sallallahu says, someone that was called to zina by someone of status and beauty. But that person says, no, but I'm afraid of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, and indeed she did decide him, and he would have inclined to her desire, had he not seen the evidence of his Lord. What does Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala say? She desired him and he desired her. He was a man, he had desires as well. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gives us the raw emotion of Yusuf alayhi salam. This is a human being. Allah says, had it not been for our security to have secured this young boy, he probably would have fallen as well. Allahu Akbar. From this we learn, do not overestimate your piety. No, we need to know that it is through the help of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that we will be able to abstain from sin. She chased after him. They raced to the door. Yusuf alayhi salam was to get to the door to escape. And while he's running away from her, she is chasing him and she grabbed his shirt from his back. And Yusuf alayhi salam is running away from her. So she ripped his shirt from the back. And while this is taking place, who walks in? Her husband. He opened the door. She found her master at the door. 
when she saw that scene, she got caught. She got caught by her husband. What is she going to say? Straight away, she twisted the story. She said, What is the punishment of someone who seduces your wife? She said, The only punishment that you must punish him is to lock him up or punish him a severe punishment. The scholars say, Why did she mention the punishment herself? She was afraid that her husband would end up killing Yusuf. She didn't want him to die because she felt guilty about what she was doing and at the same time she wanted to keep him for future opportunities. But Yusuf السلام, he spoke out. He said, she is the one that tried to attack me. She is the one that asked me for this evil act. She is the one that's been chasing me and I'm running away from her. Now the husband's thinking, well, someone's got to be lying. A witness from her family gave witness to this event and said this. If the shirt of Yusuf is torn from the front, then she is telling the truth. If the shirt of Yusuf is torn from the back, then she is lying. Because if the shirt is torn from the front, it means that Yusuf was attacking her and she was fighting him, so his shirt was torn. If the shirt is torn from the back, it means that she was running after him and trying to grab him. So it was a very wise suggestion. When the husband looked at the shirt, he saw his rip from the back. He said, surely it is the plot of you woman. Certainly mighty is your plot. And then the husband told Yusuf alayhi O oh Yusuf, turn away from this. Meaning, ignore it. Don't speak about it as if nothing happened. They don't want to scandal. It will be a political scandal for them. And then he told his wife, ask forgiveness for your sin. Verily you were of the sinful. There's a lot of slaves in the palace, in the house. And they heard what's happened. And they went and spread the rumor around. Went and spread the news to everyone. And the gossip started. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala he says, A group of women got together. They were talking about the action of the treasurer's wife. They say, Hey, have you heard about the woman of the Aziz, of the minister? She's seducing her slave. She's crazy. She's gone nuts. Who seduces their own slave? What kind of a woman is she? So the treasurer's wife, when she heard of that, she wanted to show them that what she did was out of her nature because this man, Yusuf alayhi salam, he is extremely too good looking person. And she invited those women over. She prepared a nice session. All of them sitting down and she got fruits. And she got them knives to peel the fruits. And while they were sitting down speaking, she got Yusuf to wear his best of clothes. And Yusuf alayhi salam doesn't know the plotting and the planning that she is planning. And while they are sitting down laughing, smiling, eating the fruits, she'll call and order Yusuf to come in. So the door opens and Yusuf walks in. They stop and look at Yusuf. They forgot everything around them. They swore. Wow. They said, this cannot be a human being. This has to be a noble angel. As they were looking at him, they became so paralyzed that they couldn't even feel their own bodies for a moment. They became paralyzed, hypnotized, to the point where as some of them were cutting the fruit, Allah says they cut their hands repeatedly. When the woman of the Aziz saw them do this, she turned to them and said, this is the one you blamed me because of him. And yes, I'm the one who seduced him. He resisted. But look what happened to you. Ha <laughs> ha. You cut your hands and you're blaming me. And then she said, and I'm telling him in front of you all, if he does not do, what I want him to do, if he does not do what I am ordering to do, I'm going to lock him up and I'm going to degrade him in front of everyone. She is still running after him and threatening him. So the women came to him and said, please do what she wants. We don't want you to be in prison. Now the pressure is not only from the wife of Al Aziz, but the pressure is from all of these other women who saw him. Now things are becoming very, very difficult and painful and distressful on Sayyidina Yusuf He is going through fitna. Seduction is surrounding him from every side. 
Yusuf السلام, ran away from them and he went into the darkness praying to Allah night in the night prostrating over and over and crying to Allah Oh my Lord, the prison is better to me than what they are calling me to. Subhanallah, Yusuf السلام, is doing all of this to keep away from one of the most powerful seducing things that could affect a man. And then he said, unless you turn away their plots from me, I will feel inclined towards them and be one of those who commit the sin and one of those who are ignorant. An admission from Sayyidina Yusuf السلام, of his weakness. We are weak. We should never think that we are strong. Our strength comes from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So his Lord answered his invocation and turned away from their plot. Verily, he is the all-hearer and the all-knower. She said to her husband, If you don't lock up Yusuf, and not only locking up Yusuf, but I'm afraid if you lock up Yusuf without doing anything else, people will start thinking that because Yusuf refused committing the action with us or with me, he got locked up. We need to prove to everyone that it was Yusuf the one that was trying to do the wrongdoing. Not me, I'm the treasurer's wife. So they planned and plotted. And then they came up with a suggestion and solution. Beating the drums and saying that Yusuf, the slave of the treasurer, will be locked up because he tried to go near the treasurer's wife. And kept on going around the streets of Egypt, humiliating Yusuf alayhi salam. Humiliating Yusuf alayhi salam. What an embarrassment, my brothers. Who could handle this? They took the Nabi of Allah Yusuf السلام, and they put him in jail. He was oppressed and put in jail even though he was innocent. When he entered the prison, two young men walked into prison with him. They were locked up. And those two lived in the same cell with Yusuf السلام, 24 hours in the same place as Yusuf. They see Yusuf السلام, his piety, his manners, his akhlaq, his prayers, his high spirit. They were amazed. They've never experienced someone like this in their life. So they had this respect for Yusuf السلام, And one night, they saw a dream. The first one says, Oh Yusuf, I have seen a dream. In my dream, I saw that I was squeezing wines. And the other one says, I saw a dream that there was a loaf or a bread on my head and the birds were eating from it. Please, can you tell us what is the meaning of this dream? You look like a good man. Allahu Akbar. He said, before the next meal comes to you, I will certainly reveal to you the interpretations. Before going on to interpreting their dreams, he is now slowly directing them in another pathway. A pathway of teaching them something that will benefit them of more importance. What is that? Introducing Allah to them. He says, everything you see of me, I have been taught by Allah. He says, I have left the religion, the way of those people who don't believe in Allah and they disbelieve in the life of the hereafter. And I have followed the religion of my fathers, Ibrahim, Ishaq and Yaqub. And never would we attribute any partners whatsoever to Allah. It is not fitting for us to ever associate anything with Allah as a partner. This is from the huge blessing that Allah has showered upon us. But rather most people, they don't appreciate this fact. And then he says, Oh my two companions in prison. Look at how beautifully he's calling them. Beautiful words. Oh my beloved two companions of the jail. My comrades who are seated here. Is it better to worship so many little deities and gods? Or is it better to worship the one who made you the supreme, the most powerful? Who is better to worship? He says that the command, the power is only for Allah, is only in the hands of Allah. He has commanded that you worship no one other than Him. Only Him you should worship. This is the proper way to live one's life. But most people, they don't understand. And now he is going to give them the interpretation of dream. He said, One of you will be very close to the king. One of you is going to leave from this prison and jail. And he is going to be one of the close associates of the king. And he will be pouring wine for the king. This is the one he saw that he is pressing wine. And the other one of you will be taken out of jail. 
and will be crucified and he will be left on the cross until birds will come and eat from his head that is the one who saw that he has bread and birds are eating from it and then he said the issue which you are asking about is judge that's it that's the judgment of allah it's done and then sayyidina yusuf alayhi salam went to the one who he thought would be saved and will be close to the king and sayyidina yusuf alayhi salam told him please remember my name in front of the king so yusuf alayhi salam wanted his case to be presented in front of the king so that the king would look into that case and maybe would free him this man he left jail and he went to work with the king but when he got in the palace and he got in close to the king and all the luxury of life he forgot about yusuf alayhi salam shaitan made him forget yusuf alayhi salam remained in prison for a long long more time another 7 years passed one night the king was asleep and he saw a strange dream i saw in the dream seven fat healthy cows eaten by seven lean lazy cows and he said i saw seven green ears of corn and seven dry ears of corn and the king is so worried about this dream so he start to speak to the people around him what do you think of this dream what's the interpretation of that dream especially the wise men the scholars who are around him oh chiefs explain to me my dream if you can interpret it they said the chiefs these are just confused dreams and we know nothing of the interpretation of such type of dreams now it is time to bring about the one who deserves to be there and he is yusuf alayhi salam then said the one who had been released remember the prisoner now he remembered yusuf alayhi salam when he heard about interpretation dreams he remembered the best person to interpret dreams is yusuf he said oh king on oh, no, someone yusuf the one that was locked up with him that righteous man he is the best person for you yusuf he is the righteous man o oh, king i can tell you what it means send me He said go. He was going back to Yusuf alayhi salam. And he starts off with the name Yusuf ayyuh as-siddiq. Oh Yusuf, the truthful one. So he was so excited. Seven fat cows devoured by seven weak ones. Seven green ears of corn and seven dry ones. Tell us the interpretation of this so that I can go and let the people know. Yusuf alayhi salam now has a bargaining tool in his hand. He could have said I am going to tell you the answer until you free me but Yusuf alayhi salam did it he gave him the answer without asking for anything and not only did he give the answer he gave the interpretation and his recommendations he says oh listen you are going to have 7 years of very good crop and produce you should save as much as you can in these 7 years of good produce because after that there is going to come 7 years of drought when nothing will be produced so you will have to use whatever you've saved and you'll have to bring it and after that it will return back to normal you'll have a year flourishing when the king heard about that he was taken to extraordinary shock surprise he was so impressed he said to him go and get me him i want to see him i want to meet him i want to know who he is The messenger went to convey this news to Sayyidina Yusuf alayhi salam. He told him, "The king is offering you to leave the prison and jail. You are free. You are free to leave. Not only you are free to leave, but the king wants to have you as one of his advisers. Look at this honor. Not only he is going to leave jail after years, but he is going to be the advisor of the king." But the response of Yusuf alayhi salam was amazing. It was even amazing to Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam. He refused to get out of the prison until he was proven innocent. So he said to him, "Go and tell that king of yours that what happened to those ladies who cut their hands and all those witnesses who were bearing witness against me were they false or were they true? Find all that out and then come and see. Come and get me after that." And he does not want to leave jail as the favor given to him by the king. He wants to leave jail with everybody knowing that he is innocent. Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam said, "May Allah have mercy on Yusuf. If it was me, I would have rushed towards the door and responded to the call. 
but the story of yusuf alay salam is an example from the beginning to the end it's an example of patience sabr that's the essence of story of yusuf so the king gathered all those women he heard that these are the women involved he got them all together and then he told them tell me what happened and tell me the truth on yusuf what happened between you and yusuf and you are claiming that yusuf tried to do the evil with you i want to hear the truth today so what did they respond we don't know any bad or guilt upon him they said no no yusuf is absolutely clean and then he came out the head of this whole accusation the wife of the treasurer and she said now the truth has been made undoubtedly clear i am the one who seduced him upon himself he is among the truthful ones and this is the time for my husband to know that i never did the evil i tried but it didn't happen and when i told my husband i didn't do it i am honest i did not do it the king heard a lot about yusuf and he's so amazed about him after this now he became more amazed this person was locked up innocently so the king said get him now i want him i want him to be the closest one to me this is the advice that i'll benefit from this is the minister i want to keep close and then he yusuf alayhi salam came out of prison released out of prison came forward to the king with honor and respect and he talked with the king the king was even more impressed with him when he talked to him and the king said to him now i trust you fully and now i would give you authority the king told him oh yusuf today you are my closest person what do you want so yusuf what did he ask for he asked for the job of the treasurer he said make me assign me for your treasury especially what's coming up i gave you the solution and i know how to put it into place yusuf was an early the treasurer yusuf alayhi salam he ruled everything allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says thus do we give full authority to yusuf in the land it is said that the king told him do whatever you want in the kingdom so allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says that yusuf can go anywhere in egypt he has full authority to do whatever he wants allah subhanahu wa ta'ala established sayyidina yusuf alayhi salam who was sold as a slave who faced death now yusuf alayhi salam became the most powerful person in egypt he had the treasury he had the authority all under his hands if you think there's nothing happening and the world is a dead end for you but if allah is on your side allah will make way for you but allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says and verily the reward of the hereafter is better for those who believe and used to be obedient to allah seven years come past allah subhanahu wa ta'ala had given them seven blessed years especially what the ruler and the treasurer behind it is yusuf alayhi salam and yusuf alayhi salam for seven years he put a strategy that he kept enough food and stock for the next seven years so people were comfortable in the first seven years and then the next seven years came so tough and the drought did not only come to egypt but even the countries surrounding egypt and during that seven tough years the prices of food jumped up to double and triple and in egypt the prices of food is still the same as they used to be before during the good seven years and that drought hit palestine and who's living in palestine his family and yusuf alayhi salam's family father yaqub alayhi salam his brothers who were living in a village no rain no food things were very tough and there was yusuf alayhi salam now in charge of all egypt running of distribution of grain and food his kindness generosity sympathy his fame spread and even they heard in egypt there's a good guy a kind guy he 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 looks after people well so they planned to go down from Palestine to Egypt the brothers of Joseph may peace be upon him walked in he immediately recognized all of them they were 
He recognized all of them. They didn't know who he was. As they wanted to collect, they had to pay a certain amount and collect. So as they were making their payments and so on, he looks at them and he starts asking them questions. Who are you? Where do you come from? They started saying, we are the children of the Prophet Jacob and what have you. And how many brothers are you? Well, you know, we are 11. They missed out one completely. He was in front of them. We are 11, but I only see 10 of you here. Well, you know, the one is at home and so on. No, you must bring him. You will not take his ration. You're not allowed. He must come in person to collect his ration. And if you don't bring him with you, I'm not going to give you anything. They said, we shall try to get permission for him from his father. Verily, we shall do it. The brothers of Yusuf salam, they brought with them some merchandise to do trade. The merchandise that they brought was worthless. Really, it wasn't very valuable. Sayyidina Yusuf salam, said, this merchandise that they brought, put it back in their luggage without them knowing. Why did Sayyidina Yusuf salam, do that? So that when they go back home, they would have something to bring next year with them to do trade. Yusuf salam, was afraid that maybe they would go home and they would have nothing left to bring with them next year. When they went home, oh our father, we have been prohibited from this one measure because we didn't take our brother with. So send the brother with and we will protect him. Who was this brother? This was Binyamin, the brother of Yusuf salam from the same mother. Sayyidina Yaqub was protective of Binyamin, just like he was with Yusuf. And he would not trust his brothers to take care of him. The father says, you want me to trust you with him like I trusted you with his brother before? Allah is indeed the protector. And when they opened their luggage and the grain, they even found their money returned to them. They said, look father, look, he's even returned our money. So he's asked us to bring the little, little brother with us next time we go. So the father says, I am not going to send him with you until you swear by Allah that you are going to bring him back to me unless you are surrounded, unless there is something beyond your control. So Allah says, when they had promised and sworn by Allah, still he made a dua. He says, only Allah is the one whom I lay trust in regarding what you have said. Yaqub alayhi salam says, oh my children, I have a piece of advice for you. What is the piece of advice? Oh my sons, there are going to be 11 of you, huge, handsome boys, all entering from one door, children of Jacob. There is a possibility the evil eye might overtake you as you're walking in. So don't walk in all together from one door. I want you to walk in from different doors, two from here, two from there, two from there, and enter from all different doors. People mustn't recognize you and see and say, <gasps> you might be affected by the evil eye. And this is Haq. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa says, The evil eye is true. The evil eye is some ability that some people have to cause you harm when they are jealous of you. But then Yaqub alayhi salam is clarifying something. He said, And I cannot avail you against Allah at all. This is means that you could follow. But it is not this that would save you. It is Allah. So the children walked in, two from there, two from there, two from there. And Yusuf alayhi salam sees them. Yusuf saw his brother. From the same mother and father, his brother that he loved and they were close together when they were young and they were getting picked on by his other brothers. His brother, they used to see his other brothers always mistreating him and pick on him. When Yusuf alayhi salam saw, he got so passionate about his brother. And what Yusuf alayhi salam did, he gave a room for his brothers, two people in each room. So, Two by two by two by two, ten of them were in each room. So there was one left. And the one he left aside his brother. He said, you come and sleep with me in the same room. And he told him, Binyamin, do you know who is speaking to you? This is your brother Yusuf. He embraced his brother and hugged him. And he told him, verily, I am your brother. So grieve not for what they used to do. Yusuf salam agreed with his brother Binyamin. Don't say anything. Let's keep it between us. I'm your brother. You're my brother. But we want to teach our brothers a good lesson for them to understand what they did was a big mistake. So Yusuf alayhi salam is now planning against his own brothers. There was a time when they were planning against him, but they were planning evil. Here he is planning something good. When he had given them their due, he quietly placed the gold mug of the king into the sack of his brother and it was sealed and as they were leaving an announcer called out hey you people are thieves 
What? They looked back. They said, We are not thieves. They said, By Allah, we have not come to your land to cause corruption. And we are not thieves. What is it that you have lost? They ask. So the response is, We've lost this mug of the king. And whoever comes with it shall be rewarded. Whoever finds it will be rewarded. And the person who's stolen it obviously will be penalized. So they ask a question. What do you think should be the punishment of the one who has stolen the mug? They say, well, no problem. You keep him. You imprison him himself. So now Yusuf alayhi salam is happy. And he starts looking. And they, his, his men start looking into the sacks. And intentionally, intentionally, he doesn't search that sack first. He starts off with the one, so they're happy. The next one, they're happy. The next one, they're happy. He finishes all ten of them, they're happy. And then he comes finally to the last sack. And they're about to say, you know what? You see, we told you, we're not here to steal. And he says, here you are. Here's this, here's this mug. Allahu Akbar. They took it out. Now the brothers are looking at their brother. And what do they think? They think he's a thief. So what happened? They look and they say, Him? He had a brother like him, he's told before. Who are they saying? To Yusuf alayhi salam. Who are they referring to Yusuf? But they don't know that's Yusuf. And is it true? Yes. Yusuf alayhi salam, when he was a young kid, he's told. But what did he steal? His grandfather from his mother was worshipping an idol. So Yusuf alayhi salam stole the idol and broke it. When his brothers make those comments about him, in his face, what does Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala say? He swallowed it. It pains him on the inside to hear his brother speak about him in that fashion. And then he said also silently within himself, You are in worst case and Allah knows best the truth of what you have said. Now the brothers are trying to free Binyamin because they had given their father a promise that he will come back with him. They said, O ruler of the land, verily he has a father who is old. So take one of us in his place. Indeed we think you are one of the good doers. He said, no, that will be oppression. That is wrong. How can we take an innocent one? He is guilty. We gonna keep him. When they gave up, they went on the side. Their elder brother, he said, You know, your father made us give him a pledge that we'll come back with him. And your father took the same pledge from us when we were young and we lost Yusuf. How are we gonna go and face our father? He said, I'm not gonna leave Egypt. I'm not going to go and face our father after this. And yes, he stayed behind and his brothers went back. And he told them, go back to your father. Tell him, tell him the truth. Our oh, father, your son stole, he committed the crime. And we only witness for what we knew. We don't know what's behind the scenes. So they went back and they told their father what happened. The father didn't believe this. How could it happen that before you betray Yusuf and you come and lie? And now you betray his other brother and you lie. So he told them, Nay, but your own selves have beguiled you to do something. This time they are telling the truth. They said, Ask the people in Egypt and ask the caravan. All of them are witness that we are telling the truth. Now he's lost three children. Two were gone and the one refused to come back. He says, My patience is very beautiful. I have hope that Allah will bring back all three of these children to me together. He kept on crying and weeping until his eyes lost vision because of sorrow. He was suppressing that sorrow. The brothers tried to reduce this pain on their father and they said, You still mention Yusuf, Yusuf is still in your mind. Can't you get over it? Continue thinking of Yusuf until you're gonna collapse. But what did he say? I am not complaining to you. I am not complaining to mankind. I seek assistance from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And this father says, I know from Allah what you don't know. Because he remembers the dream of Yusuf. And he knows that one day Yusuf will be victorious. And then he said, Go, go back again. Try, try to rescue him and have him set freed. And look for Yusuf as well. Don't give up hope of Yusuf. They said to Yaqub alayhi salam, You are still dreaming that your son Yusuf will come back. What's the matter with you old man? What's the matter with you? You crazy? This is what they were saying to him. But Sayyidina Yaqub alayhi salam did not lose hope. And he said, And never give up hope of Allah's mercy. Certainly no one despairs of Allah's mercy except people who are disbelieved. Decades had passed. 
And here is the man with hope in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala making dua every day, day in, day out, without losing hope. A great prophet, brothers, a great prophet. Why was he a great prophet? Subhanallah. We don't need a whole surah for Yaqub alayhi salam. We need these glimpses. And the next year, they went to Egypt to receive the ration. They went to Sayyidina Yusuf alayhi salam and they said, O ruler of the land, a hard time has hit us in our family. Difficult moments. And we couldn't find anything except this cheap stuff. We know it's not worth to buy goods from you. But be generous and donate to us. Give us something in generosity. But you're a generous man. You're a good man. Give us something in return. And they said truly, Allah does reward the charitable. At that point when Yusuf saw his brothers begging, he didn't want to go any further. So what did Yusuf say? He said, Do you know what you did to Yusuf and his brother whilst you people were ignorant? They were shocked. Why? Nobody knows about Yusuf. No one. It's either them or Yusuf himself. When he said that, they immediately knew this man is Yusuf. Are you Yusuf? He says, I am Yusuf and this is my brother. Indeed, Allah has blessed us in so many ways. And definitely those who bear patience, those who are conscious of Allah and bear patience, Allah will never waste the reward of those who do good deeds. They realized their loss and they said, By Allah, indeed Allah has preferred you above us and we certainly have been sinners. These brothers who were jealous of Yusuf, so jealous they tried to kill him. Now they are saying you are better than us. He immediately says, no blame upon you today. I don't want to know anything. It's all over, forgiven and forgotten. Let's talk about something else. Allahu Akbar. May Allah forgive you and he is the most merciful of those who show mercy. So he forgave his brothers and he allowed them to leave. But he gave them something. He gave them his shirt and he said, Go with the shirt of mine and cast it over the face of my father. He will become clear sighted and bring to me all of your family. On one hand, the caravan is leaving Egypt, going towards Yaqub alayhi salam with the shirt. And on the other hand, Yaqub alayhi salam, so many hundreds of kilometers away, is saying, Oh my people, I know I can't see, but I can definitely smell Yusuf. I can smell him. I can smell him. He is coming near. And the people around him are saying, No man, you are fi dalalik al qadim. You just have this obsession. And what you've been saying all along for all these years, you're just repeating it. And it's probably something that you're going to now need to forget. When the caravan came, they took the shirt and they cast it over him. And his eyes became clear once again. He says, oh, my children, oh, my people, didn't I tell you I know something from Allah that you people do not know. Now the children are embarrassed because they need to face their father. Years of what they did. Oh, our father. Seek forgiveness for our sin. We are definitely wrong. We were totally wrong. He said, I will ask my Lord for forgiveness for you. Verily, he only is the one who is of forgiving, the most merciful. Now all of them, they took their belongings, everything with them, and they started moving towards Egypt. As soon as they came in, Sayyidina Yusuf has prepared to meet his family. Then when they entered on to Yusuf, he betook his parents to himself and said, Enter Egypt if Allah will in security. And he had a throne. Sayyidina Yusuf was sitting on a high throne. So he elevated his father and his mother to sit with him on the throne. And then all of them, the father and the mother and eleven brothers, made sujood to Sayyidina Yusuf And he looks and he sees father, mother and eleven brothers. And he says, Oh my father, this is the interpretation of my dream of old. My Lord has made it come true. So the eleven planets were his brothers, and the sun is his father, and the moon is his mother. Now this prostration, my brothers and sisters in Islam, was allowed in the Sharia of Yusuf alayhi salam. It's forbidden in the Sharia of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wasallam. And this prostration, not a prostration of worship, but was a prostration of respect. In our Sharia, in the law that has come with Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wasallam, your head goes on the ground solely for your maker. He, he continues and he says, and Allah has really done me a favor by removing me from the jail. And Allah has really blessed me by bringing you people from those rural areas and bringing them here. 
Then he says, this all happened after shaitan caused a difference between myself and my brothers. Certainly, my Lord is the most courteous and kind unto whom he will. Truly he, only he is the all-knowing and the all-wise. He has everything you could possibly ask for in this world. And he draws to the side in a private moment with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And once again, Rabbi. My Lord, you have indeed bestowed on me the sovereignty and taught me the interpretation of dreams. The only creator of the heavens and the earth. You are my wali in this world and the hereafter. He had wealth. He had authority. He had everything you could think of. He had his parents now over here. He had his brothers. They solved the problem in a minute. But this for Sayyidina Yusuf is nothing. He is not a seeker of dunya. He would say, Alhamdulillah, for what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given me. Look at the dua that Sayyidina Yusuf is saying. He said, Cause me to die as a Muslim and join me with the righteous. Dunya in his eyes is nothing. Surah Yusuf was revealed after the famous year called year, the year of sorrow, the year of regret, which were the most painful for the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Why? His wife Khadija radiallahu anha, the one who loved him, the one who helped him in his da'wah, she had passed away. His uncle Abu Talib, his helper and supporter, has passed away. The Quraysh and their trials and the tribulations against the Prophet ﷺ, against the believers had increased. The situation was very desperate. In this difficult time when you're thinking, where is Allah's victory going to come? Allah took his Prophet and revealed to him Surah Yusuf, saying to him, Ya Muhammad, Ya Muhammad, come. Listen to this story, Ahsan al Qasas. This is the story of your brother Yusuf alayhi salam. He was kidnapped, he was tortured, he was tried. He faced many challenges like you're facing. He had to leave his home, had to go to Misr before he got victory in a high position. Maybe this will happen to you one day, and this is what happened. Just as we help him, Wallahu ghalibun ala amri, the same way we will help you, Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Surah Yusuf is meant to uplift his spirit It's meant to console him. It's meant to strengthen him. Surah Yusuf is going to be his light that will lead him out of this depression. A number of incidents happened that also led to the revelation of this surah. One of the direct causes of revelation was the fact that the Sahaba wanted something to uplift their spirits as well. Another direct cause of revelation, it is said that the Quraysh wanted to show that he's not truly a prophet. And so they sent a delegation to the Yahud of Yathrib. And they asked the Yahud of Yathrib, tell us a question that only a prophet would be able to answer. And the Yahud said, ask him about the story of Yusuf and his brothers. Nobody in Mecca knew these stories. So they went to the Prophet Sallallahu and they asked him, Tell us the story of Yusuf and his brothers if you are truly a prophet. And so Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala answered that question and he reveals Surah Yusuf and right at the end of the surah, one of the last verses in the surah, Allah says that you didn't know this, you and your people before, you didn't know this before uh, this surah came down to you. Now Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, when he came back to Mecca victorious, he didn't come you know, standing and beating drums and telling people I'm winning and so on and raising his hands, nothing. His head was so down, he was in sujood, subhanallah. His head was right down, it was almost touching the back of the camel, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And he entered thanking Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, Ya Allah, you've granted me victory over these people who have prepared armies to come and fight me, who have tried to kill me, who have killed so many of my companions, my relatives. He looks at Quraysh, O oh, people of Quraysh, what do you think I'm going to do to you today? After so many years, similar to what happened to Yusuf alayhi salam. So they looked at him and their leaders told him, we hope that it is something good because you are an honorable brother, the son of a noble man. He says, I am not going to tell you anything besides what Joseph told his brothers, what Yusuf alayhi salam told his brothers, no blame upon you today. Go, all of you are free. Sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says that certain in the story of Yusuf and his brothers are signs for those, the sa'ilin, those who ask. So the Muslim, when he looks at the stories in the Quran, in the Sunnah, 
the story of Yusuf alayhi salam, we must look at them as the sa'ilin, those who are asking, who want guidance. If you look at the story of Yusuf alayhi salam and you think about it, you would find in it an ocean of meanings and lessons. The essence of the surah of Yusuf, verily who has taqwa and is patient, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will not waste the deeds of al musineen the right doers. Sayyidina Yusuf salam was victorious in the end, in dunya and in akhirah, but it happened after a while, therefore it needs patience. If you do not have patience, you will not be able to survive the long road. When Yaqub salam was afflicted with death and he called his children and said, what will you worship after me? They said that we will worship your Lord, our Lord, the Lord of Abraham, the Lord of Ishmael, the Lord of Isaac, the Lord of Yaqub, the Lord of Jacob. We will worship the Lord that we have been taught to worship and we are to him Muslims. We have submitted ourselves to him. And he passed away in Egypt and he requested that my body should be taken near my father Ishaq salam, and Yusuf salam, carried out his wish. And then you have other prophets was sent by Allah Azzawajal. And after Lut salam, comes about Prophet Shuaib salam. Wa sallallahu wa sallam wa baraka ala nabina Muhammadin subhanallahi wa bihamdih subhanaka Allahumma wa bihamdika nashhadu an la ilaha illa anta nastaghfiruka wa natubu ilayhi.